you guys see that now, hopefully? Yeah, yeah or homepage. Yeah, okay. All I really wanted to tell you about the San Diego Fund Workers homepage is it is a listing of all of the video SIGs we have that we know of that are coming. Uh, you know, this morning's the outreach program is the number one of the top, and you know, all the way down to the new SIG, which is a live egg, live edge epoxy one on on the 18th. And hopefully we'll keep pushing them in there and out. So just let everybody know that that page is available. And then, oh, I'm sorry, on the bottom here, if you can see my mouse, it says click here for a recap of previous videos. The second page, we have everything we've done, you have, can access it there. Okay. On, the, on that second page. Okay, get off the phone. All right. Trudy, you know, you have to turn the phone in. I'm not playing this game anymore. It's a reading bullshit. Do we have a problem? We, 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 we fix it. <laughs> we fix it. Okay. And, oops, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to quite do that just yet. The one last thing I want to talk to you guys about, if I can fix the share screen. Is sort of just a little rehash of of um, Zoom. Can you guys all see my screen? See the wonderful picture of me, and it says Zoom controls and all that stuff. We see you with chisels behind you. Yeah, see me with chisels behind it. That's as it should be. Okay. I, I, can you see the screen? Can you see my mouse and the things moving on the bottom? No. No. Okay. Hang on just a second. Let me make sure that. How about now? Yes. Okay. Zoom controls. Zoom controls. Perfect. Okay. Just a quick little rehab on the, most of you guys have kind of figured this out. Here's the mute button is how you mute your audio or unmute it. Uh, if you're working from a PC, you can just, and you want to temporarily unmute it, you can just hold down the space bar and it'll be unmuted while you hold down the space bar. Rest of you hopefully have found the start and stop video uh, button that, you know, turns on and off your camera depending on how your hair day is going and, and whatever else you want to see. The invite button is for inviting other people if we want to invite other people. The manage participants, you know, brings up the list of who is participating and who is not. The share screen, we've already experienced it. <clears throat> we, when you want to share your screen, you share it then. There's a, a, when it's shared, there's a stop share button on the top to stop that. Chat brings up the chat window so you can see where, who's chatting. Uh, you know, just a word to wise, everybody can see all the chats. There is no such thing as, as private chat per se. It all gets there. Record button right now in, you know, in deference of internet security, the only person who can record is the host for this particular meeting. It is me. And then on the far is reactions. If you push that button, you can see, you can push up an applauding hand and, uh, and, Okay, now I'm going to go back to live. Push up an applauding hand or a uh, hold your hand up or a thumbs up for the uh, for the two things. Uh, just a couple real quickie I wanted to go through <clears throat> on the video links that I showed you. The left hand link on the home page is to the Zoom meeting. If you use that link, there's no reminder. The right hand link is for Punch Pass. If you go through Punch Pass. The only thing Punch Pass really does for you is it'll send you an email about 15 minutes before the class starts to remind you. Okay. The previous videos link directly to YouTube. So you can see the previous videos if you want to do that. The sum of the videos, Travis has put in a system called Discourse, and we put in, hey, you know, at you know, seven minutes, here's where Gary put the lead into. The golf club. So if you're interested in particular sex, you don't have to sit through or zoom to try to figure out there. Uh, and 
that's really all I have to say for you guys. So without much further ado, I would like to introduce the star of the show, Irish Mike, because I really cannot consistently say his last name. So my apologies, Mr. <laughs> McElhenney. But uh, he is now the star of the show, and I'm going to, if I can find his, find his name down here, I'm going to unmute his microphone and set him as the spotlight, and it's all yours, Mike. All right, there you go. Well, this is the History of Outreach at San Diego Flying Woodworkers Association, and I figured the best way to do it was to read a bunch of newsletters. So I started reading newsletters, uh, and as I looked through them, I, I saw what looked to be outreach activity, although the actual outreach thing didn't happen until 2016. Uh, here we are in 2005 with that uh, wonderful thing that happened at the uh, Camp Pendleton the, with the playground, which evidently is, you know, Ed and, and Bob are behind that, probably more Bob than, than Ed, according to Ed Gladney. Um, and uh, I want them to, to show their PowerPoint. I hope one of them has it up and ready to go. Um, and um, uh, that's, um, that's- I'm ready to go, thing. Mike, don't worry about it. Okay, good. Uh, Bob Reese was another one who uh, came up with the idea for doing things for the Central Library. We did lots of furnishings for them down there. Um, and, uh, then the fire station project started when uh, neighbor's house burned down and uh, station 27 was the first responder. So I uh, talked to Captain Ronnie Dijon and we uh, worked on, got some red gum eucalyptus from Dale Stauffer and uh, took the wood to Maker Place, used their CNC to flatten everything out and off to the shop. I got lots of help. Uh, Jeff Bratt was helpful. Uh, he worked on the table made a cribbage board, brought chairs to the meeting. Uh, station still treasures that cribbage board. Don Spangler helped, Claire Peister found a cameraman, and Dan Heck made pens and so on. Um, the following year, my wife and I uh, uh, donated a, a, a dishwasher to them, and I took it down and installed it, and uh, I got a, 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 a a big problem from uh, Jonathan Harris, who, who uh, complained that he was the dishwasher and that his job was now in danger. And so we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, Station uh, 9 in La Jolla wanted a table. I've got a really cool little video to show you how we started to get that thing into a truck. Uh, and uh, Steven's here. Steve Nassaro is here because he's the, the big guy that uh, helped us out to, to get that table finished. Um, uh, the current goal is to help firemen and military learn woodworking, and um, I think we need to um, move on and get people in our community, anybody who needs help, find a way to help them and see if we can get them involved in woodworking at the same time. Um, I think uh, probably the way to, to do that now is to let's take a look at some pictures. That's it. All right, there is a god and she likes me. All right, um, so we're, uh, obviously you see some kittens there and a puppy and uh, uh, can I make this like smaller so the, this thing on the side uh, should be on the top or something? Mike, if I could just comment, what you're seeing is the list of participants or the chat window. At the top of that, you'll three, see three little icons and you can make that tall bar that's blocking the slide you can uh, make it disappear by clicking on the first of those three little icons in the title bar it just disappears into a small line at that point that one okay got it great all right thank you okay well anyhow where we are with cats and puppies uh at the uh, uh, outreach they're just starting their season uh, and and uh, they're in dire need of help right now. And anyhow, uh, this was the Sucker Shelf Project, which I just finished. Uh, you can see that uh, over here, uh, they've got a, a, a shelf where 
uh, where kittens can jump up on it and so on, but they, they need to separate them sometimes. So if you look on the far right side, uh, you can see that that sucker shelf that we put in there uh, puts the, uh, uh, allows the kittens to be separated. And when some of them are, are, uh, are, are, when they're under stress, sometimes they tend to try to suckle each other and mom's not there and that can be uh, painful and hurt uh, kittens. So they take the one that's doing the problem cat and put it up on above uh, and uh, everything's fine. So I built that with some cards. There's 24 of them, and that was quite a project. Um, it's done now, and uh, they're happy with it. Moving on. Hey, hey, Mike, could you tell us the backstory to this? Because you don't go from a guy walking down the street to someone invited into the Humane Society to take on a major project like this. How did that happen? Uh, my my wife uh, Patty is uh, involved with. She's a volunteer down there, and we both are. And I've been working with them for a year now, or a little bit more than a year. Uh, I go down and do everything from unstopping a toilet to hanging. Uh, uh, we hang up a bunch of uh, you know, racks to put the, uh, the gloves in and, uh, you know, all kinds of things that I help them out with. Uh, and then this just came up that they needed these, uh, these sucker shells. And um, we jumped on it before kitten seasons. So they have them now. And so you, this, this didn't exist before. You're not replacing something. You came up with something totally new. And <laughs> really, yeah, your, your deadline was kitten season. Is that what you said? Uh, yes, chicken season or kitten season <laughs> doesn't work. But uh, kitten season uh, is here and uh, they're ready to go now. So they're starting mm -hmm. to actually use them. And did you happen to have a team of people helping you or was this a solo project? I was a team of people myself. I'm great on that one. Um, it kind of happened in the last bit of it with our um, with our social distancing, and uh, just really couldn't have people over and and uh, that, to help. So it just worked out that I finished it off myself. So. Did Did they fund this project? Oh uh, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Who funded it? We're we're deep pockets here. A lot, a lot of uh, a lot of Mike Mike and Patty money going out to this one. I think it probably ended up around what thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars for the for everything. Wow. So anyhow, so moving on, we we got that one finished, um, and then uh, this is a kind of a, a look at the um, uh, at the fire station twenty seven thing, uh, kind of the things we did. Starting in the left, we got lots of participants. Um, you can read that little list um, that. Um, uh, we had uh, a number of people, some people from the neighborhood uh, actually helped out as well. Uh, down on the lower left, you can see that um, Maker Place CNC machine. And that's where we flattened the lumber for the table. Uh, in the uh, middle is a t-shirt that's engine 27 from Claremont. Um, I had the guys at the station sign a piece of a piece of paper and we uh we uh i made him a plate with that on it so uh, up in the top right there's jeff working on the table uh one down is don spangler working on the table on the bottom right there's a picture of the table uh, kind of get an eye eye of that marvelous wood in the middle of it and uh, in the middle, down below, what's me at the, uh, I brought it to show just before we gave it to them. So that's it for that. Hey, Mike, before you go on, can you tell us, how did you find out about this again? Was this the one where your neighbor's house burned down? Yeah, yeah the George, uh, his house burned down and uh, they were out on the street just like that. And the way they took care of them was uh, just marvelous. They came over and, uh, the, the fireman had a social worker there before the fire was out, uh, and they were uh, take, helping these 95-year-old people uh, uh, in, in, into a new place. And, and uh, I remember I walked over and gave George a couple hundred dollar bills because he didn't have a penny on him. They, everything was in the house, uh, even his wallet. Um, so uh, anyhow. And Mike, did you did you provide this wood? Because it looks as though this time 
you had a team of people, which is great. But yeah. where, did the, where did the wood come from? Oh, the wood came from Dale, Dale Stauffer. Uh, okay. Out of his house, he had a bunch of the, the uh, red gun eucalyptus, and uh, we, we jumped on it. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I, I've, I've, I, I'm kind of jumping up a little bit. I wanted to go back to the beginning of this thing, and I think we'll do that with Ed when he's got his, his PowerPoint in a minute. And I'll be done with this one shortly. Uh, so uh, we're done with engine 27, moving on. Um, this is the uh, table for station nine, kind of after it's been put together. But uh, let me go back, let me go move on a little bit with the, uh, there it is even further back. Uh, my friend Jack Maloney with a the chainsaw there kind of uh, straightening it up. And um, we, uh, we were getting it ready for transport. And, uh, and Steve Zaro knows all about that. He was there with me. <laughs> okay, so those are the logs, the Torrey Pine, before they were turned into a table. Uh, there's a chunk of that Torrey Pine that uh, got turned into a tiki. My friend Jack, uh, he makes uh, tikis. And he was the one on the fair last year that I think uh, it didn't let him put it in, I don't know why, but anyhow. <clears throat> and uh, the guys from 27, they show up in front of my house regularly, they're always welcome. Uh, it's kind of, uh, I get the neighbors wondering, is, is, he, is he okay, everything fine over there? But it, he is, and that's it. Um, Irish Mike has spoken. So that's the end of that one. Hey Mike, can I ask you a general question? Yeah. It seems to me like these opportunities were found by you. These opportunities were picked up and run with by you. Uh, is, is that how these things come about? Your, your wife happens to be working at the Humane Society. You happen to have a neighbor whose house burned down. Is that how these things have surfaced? Kind of. I've become aware of them, uh, and I'm... I'm becoming aware that there's uh, other people out there that uh, are, are doing this too. And uh, that's why I'd like to get to Ed and, and, uh, and, and Bob and, and, you know, other people who've done this sort of thing. Uh, I did have a short video. Is there any way I can show that? That's about a 30 second quick video of loading that log for the, uh, you should be able to just share your share your screen again and start the video and it should play for us just like we were there okay um see if that works and is that what did it work are you seeing it we just still see you you're not sharing your screen right now okay uh then i'll make this smaller the, remember the share screen share button's in the middle share. of the, uh, on the bottom. Of the screen 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 window. There we go. Okay, uh, let's try, I think, this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, they made the mistake of letting me drive the truck and I went up in the front of the truck and, and I put it in reverse and thinking that would hold it just fine. And they were up there back in the back, they was putting this log up, trying to get it in the truck. And you'll see it just up oh, there it went. Um, so uh, Steve will know better next time that you can't, uh, you can't trust me to uh, uh, drive the truck when they're loading a log in the back. Um, that's it. So um, hopefully that was edifying. And well done, Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike, how, how long did it take you to get that wood dry after you slapped it? Uh, one more time. It was obviously a whole log. How did you get it dry enough to make a table out of it? How long did it take? Um, oh, good God. I'm in the middle of something else here. What happened? Screen sharing is paused. Um, oh, what, what have I done? Uh, yeah, Mike, just hit on the top of your screen should be this red stop sharing button. Oh, okay, stop share. There you go, okay. 
Cool. Okay, question, uh, uh, Sally? It was a whole log, so obviously you slabbed it, but then how long did it take to dry until you could make a table? Months. About oh, six that's months. all? Yeah. That's not long. Yeah, it was out in, the, in the driveway and it got rained on and all that wonderful color comes out when uh, when the, the little bacteria get down in there and make it, you know, you, you know that with uh, throwing wood in your garden and having it turn blue on you. So this is the kind of same thing that's going on there. Hey Mike, I've heard you're involved with Garden of Innocence, is that true? Um, one more time? Garden of Innocence, the uh, Caskets for um, babies, or you know, no. Oh, I, somebody told me you were doing that. I was no, I, I didn't. I didn't know about that one. That's a, there. You go. There's another one. You see, they pop right out of the air, and, and I, I learned about this, and now I'm interested. But we ought to go back to uh, uh, to Ed and Bob right now, and, and uh, have them talk about their um, uh, the the you know the early outreach at the uh, this was right in the height of the war and all that sort of thing in 2005 uh, at Camp Pendleton when they did a really marvelous thing. So uh, can we move to Ed? Uh, his audio is off. Ed, there you go. Okay, I, I, uh, I'm ready to go. Just tell me what I got to do. Or Mike, I'm not hearing anybody now. Hey, hang on just a second. I'm moving papers and stuff. I get a share screen. Yes, Ed. Huh. We see you. Do you see the share screen button at the bottom center? It's green. Yeah. I'm looking for my uh, house project uh, way back in uh, 2005. Um, there was a fellow that worked for Vermont, Vermont uh, American Tool Company that actually at that time owned Bosch Tools. And uh, they uh, had this fellow, Chris Connington, who was running a, th a program called uh, Unmet Needs uh, along with the, uh, the VFW. And somehow they got a hold of us. And I think it might have been through Chuck Anderson at the time, who found a uh, need that the Camp Pendleton had uh, for a playhouse. And the playhouse was uh, for their um, they had a uh, daycare center set up and they had plenty of stuff on the inside of it, but the outside park area did not have any kind of a swing set or a playhouse or anything like that. So um, Chris Connington got a hold of us and um, we decided we could take this project on mainly because uh, Vermont American was going to pay for everything. And uh, so all we had to do was provide the labor. Um, we got started with it out of a uh, uh, kind of a, uh, let's see. This is a picture of a, a backyard playhouse. Oops. Not sure how to go back. But uh, your luck, arrow, luck, luck arrow will bring you back. Say that again. Oh. The left arrow down on the bottom of your, there you go. Oops, that's the right one. The other way. Yeah, I want to go the other way. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> uh, right there on your thing, it says, one of them says previous screen. Also, Ed, on your, on your keyboard are four arrow keys. You can use them to go forward, the right oh, one. Oh. <laughs> Keep going. There you go. One more. Yeah, so anyway, this was go. this was a project out of wood wood mag woodcraft. Let's see, wood shop magazine. Yeah. And um, we kind of used this as a basis, but uh, we had a meeting with the um, with the. Uh, and I wanted to go back to that. 
This is the notes from a meeting that uh, was held with the people at Camp Pendleton and ourselves, and we kind of decided what we would be able to do. We had a deadline of getting it done by uh, April 1st. That turned out to be a real April Fool's today because it never got done until about July. Well, but April 30th. As soon as we got into this with the, uh, with the uh, military, they started putting all kinds of conditions on this, uh, on this thing, which caused us to have to go back and redesign it and do a lot of stuff that we weren't planning on. But you know, we did it. Bob Stevenson actually took charge of all that made up the drawings. I don't know if you had an architect or... No, I did it myself, but I, I had a set of plans to go by. Um, yeah. They were miniature set of plans. Oh, okay. And, and I extrapolated from those plans and included all the the building requirements. I had, I had worked as a military construction at the Naval Hospital my last four years on active duty. So... Uh, I was into construction already at that point. Ed, can you give us a feel, or Bob, can you give us a feel for how the requirements change? What kinds of things made you have to change the project? Well, in a backyard, you wouldn't normally have to have it uh, with footings. Uh, they they wanted footings 18 inches into the ground, concrete. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, the the size of the bolts and what have you that were holding this all together it was very well constructed they didn't have to tear it down when they moved they could have just undone the bolts on the bottom at the footings and picked it up and moved it in in total uh, but they they evidently just got rid of it. it it sounds like because of construction standards that they require you had to build a tank where originally you were just going to build a regular uh toy house it, it became well, it was very it was very safe safety was the most important thing they okay. they have a very strong safety program on the base yeah. okay yeah you know, we had to use a special slide that they were that they uh, recommended i can remember that part of it yeah commercial slide in the swings the chains had to be a certain requirement things like that and they still funded all those changes yeah, uh, well, I think the association covered some of it. Got it. Uh, okay. I, remember, I remember going to Dixie Line and spending money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Vermont American actually paid for just about everything. Yeah, they reimbursed they, anything. They were that, very that we generous. Spent. Yeah. They were very generous. And they also supplied all the tools everything. that we used, uh, all the machines that we used. Excellent. Yeah, uh, so this is a picture here of the fittings are already set. And we're starting on the base. And this is Bob and Ron Rossi working on some stuff. And uh, I forget this fellow's name, but he was an active member at the time. Yeah, we had 35 guys that were involved in this. Um, yeah, we had a total of 35 people. And everybody showed up for every session. Uh, and that's, you know, it's a fairly long drive up there. Um, and we get started about eight, nine o'clock in the morning and work till two or three in the afternoon. Um, just because Mike mentioned that occasionally while these projects were to be helpful and to volunteer to make a difference, sometimes it was also to get people into woodworking and also to get people who were with that organization, say the Humane Society or uh, the fire station to get involved in the project themselves. When you say you had 35 people, were they all association members or were some all, of them they were all association members? That's correct. Wow. 35. And Here's one of the tools that uh, Bosch, uh, that uh, Vermont American gave us was just a uh, saw. They also had a table saw. And both of those uh, pieces of equipment are used at the fair every year. So we have kept them uh, in working condition. And uh, we use them quite a bit. They, they really helped out. Um, they provided a truck, as you see behind Ed there, there's a, there's a truck. They provided that for us to store our equipment in so we didn't have to haul it back and forth. Right. So that was a big help as well. 
they really put their money into it when they when they got this thing. That Chris Connington came out and talked with us about it. And he was actually out of Chicago, based out of Chicago. And he flew out for that uh, meeting that I had the minutes up there for uh, when we had that to get everything going. He was a big help. So I'm just going to let some, uh, some of these uh, pictures play through. That's me there. There's uh, uh, Ron, Don Spangler. And... Uh, You can see I do a lot of watching. <laughs> <laughs> there's old. Uh... So here's the base. We got the base up, and then the, the part for the swing. This uh, trellis <laughs> material. We had all that. They supplied Harry the. Uh... And Harry. Or I'm sorry, Jack. Harry's Jack Thurman, yeah. That's Vicky, Vicky Hennon, Hennon and, and, and Chuck. Chuck Anderson, Bill Collins. Jack and Bill. There's Bob up there. So we got that bottom part up, and then you start putting up the, uh, the top, the top part of the playhouse, and you see the steps there, the step framing going in. And there was Dale up there. They had a requirement that uh, they came out and said that we had to have hard hats if we we're going to be working on the structure. <laughs> so that was one of the marine requirements. So nobody could get on the structure unless they had a hard hat. Except Dale, apparently. <laughs> he, eventually, he eventually got his. <laughs> Say that again, Bob. Dale eventually got his hard hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he didn't have it the first couple times. No. Anyway, here goes the structure going up. So our original timeline was supposed to have this done by April 1st. There's Dale down there. And uh, there's the sandbox. Where'd you get the scaffold from? The scaffold was provided by the Marine Corps. Here they put this fence up around it so we could be um, protected from anybody, onlookers and that kind of stuff. So they protected the area. There's the sand back there for the sandbox, which they delivered. Here we're almost, almost done, but we're, we're getting there. Supplied the canopies too, didn't they? Yeah, we, they we were working everything. in the. They supplied everything. Yeah. We were working well, in we the rain a couple of days. They gave it to us. Here we got the framing going in for the windows and the doors and stuff. Some of it's been painted. This is the primer that's on there. The roof is going on. Now we got the railing up. There's Bob and me congratulating each other. <laughs> then the paint happened. Here's the finished product. That's that. That's the, paint, the, painting, uh, the painting was done by the president at that time, Robert Trim. Yeah, and Robert. He brought out, his, brought out his spray equipment and he did a nice job. Uh, with the multicolors that we put in there for the kids. Yeah, you can see these multicolors on the inside. And then the out was all red and, and gray. And so here's the crew. There's uh, Chuck Anderson, Harry Foyt. Many of these people have since passed. There's the, so we have, the back there. I have a list. I have a list of the guys and uh, Chuck Anderson, Odilo Brand, Harry Ford, uh, Bob Keegan, uh, Jack Thurman, and Len Winter, ones that, that I know of that's passed away since we built it. Some of you remember Vicki Hennon? 
Yeah. Guys, there, was, there was mention that this was removed or taken down. How many years was it in place? This was 2005. I'm sorry. Was I that don't know what year they took it down. But, but it is down now? Yeah, they moved, uh, they moved the daycare center and in, increased the housing out there. And uh, they, they took it down when they moved the daycare center. That makes sense. Okay, thanks. I don't know if you remember this guy. Um, the uh, R.D. Emery, he came out from uh, Hollywood. He was a Sarge on, on TV. He used to have a program. Right. So he, he they called him Gunny. Came down for the presentation. This was done in July, and it was a, a big invitation. We had the KPBS there, and uh, the, it was the, a catered, the people from the base, the commandant came out. They catered a lunch for everybody. Right. They had a big lunch there. So it was a nice. It was a formal handoff, if you will, of the of the playhouse. God, we were in good shape then, too. Yeah, and there's that Chris Connington right here. I'm standing over there, and this is uh, already Emory. He's since passed. There's the kids all lined up, ready to go. And then we got them finally at the uh, playhouse. There they are coming down the slide going to play swing set and uh, the kids made this drawing for us and uh, so I had my picture taken with the kids and they had clowns out there and everything it was uh, quite an event and there's Arlie and me I was pretty happy to have that done and is that the end I guess it is that was a fun project <laughs> Hey, and so there's the playhouse in in use, and it stood there for quite a long time. But uh, they moved the the children's center, and then for some reason just tore it down. I don't know why. I don't know if they have something else there now. This was right inside the gate, the main gate when you came in, and it was one of one of the, the first street that turned off to the right, and it was right there on that corner. But it was a great project. I mean, especially for us, since uh, we had everything, you know, paid for. And uh, at the end, there was a whole bunch of uh, small tools that they uh, provided for us, like uh, drill bits and sets and, and things like that. And uh, we ended we ended up auctioning all that. So we actually put our put our tickets in a and a hat and had them drawn out with, for all the people that participated. Yeah. So they came away with a few uh, tools. Yeah, but I have a I tools, have uh, we kept for the association. I have a list uh, of the guys that received. We had a drill, a cordless drill motor, a belt sander. A yeah, you have piece. everything on there. Yeah, drill set, belt, another belt sander, seven inch saw blade with a nut driver. We uh, cordless. Oh, oh. Say, so how do I, uh, uh, Mike, how do I get out of this now? Uh, you know, um, so I go back to the picture of me. At, at the top of your screen in the center, there's a stop, red stop oh, share. Stop the share. Yeah. Okay, there I am. All right. Here's the, the list of people. <laughs> firemen here, I think. Um, yeah, Kyle, for example, is here. That's not uh, doing me any good. Kyle O'Neill. Uh, he's, uh, Kyle, why don't you tell him what you do with the, uh, with the fire department and how we got to, together. Uh, can, can we switch to him and, and, uh, talk to him? Well, he's a fireman and, um, uh, there he is. You guys see me okay? Hear me all right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hi everyone. So, um, yeah, my name's Kyle O'Neill. Um, I have 17 years in the fire service. And so basically what I do now is I moved into an administrative position uh, about a year and a half ago. 
and I am in charge of coordinating the cancer, uh, the firefighters that come down and contract cancer uh, from this occupation. So, so I'm moving actually into my shop where it's a little quieter. <coughs> Excuse me. And so for, for you guys that don't know, it's, a, it's become a big epidemic for us as firefighters. Um, basically because of what's burning in the fire now. And I won't, I won't talk too much about this, just want to give you guys a glimpse of what this looks like. So um, we've had, so the statistics, the way they stand right now, about 70% of the firefighters that die in the line of duty is, is because of cancer. And so a little over about four years ago now, our department, the San Diego Fire Rescue Department, decided to do something about it and to make change. And so we're kind of, you know, changing our culture. We're creating an education to the membership um, about how do we prevent this? What things can we do better? Um, let me give you an example. Wearing our SCBAs after the fire is out, uh, the, the material continues to off gas and people are breathing that stuff in. Of course, it's not good for us. And where this differs is firefighters from the yesteryears, the stuff that was in our homes was the stuff like wood and cotton and natural occurring, uh, natural uh, fiber substances. And everything that you, you know is manufactured for the most part today um, is some kind of a hard hydrocarbon. And the unfortunate consequence to that is the end user or when it burns, um, we're the ones in, in inhaling it and not only inhaling it, but we're absorbing it through our skin. So a lot's being done in this field. And that's kind of where I come in as a, as a, an advocate for the department to help make change, help do things like educate our new recruits. Um, the list is pretty long as you can imagine. So, and right now I'm, I'm dealing with the COVID-19 epidemic. Um, so, I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm part of our health and safety division. Um, I work in that specifically. And um, Mike, I'll just, I'll just kind of pull myself into how I, I came about meeting Mike. So for uh, a good while, I was seeing Mike's um, fine woodworking come into Station 27. I wasn't stationed there, but I would pass through. And guys there would talk about this guy, Mike. And so I started out being a woodworker about 10 years ago. Um, and it's kind of a, a bit of a long story, but I was basically given these old hand planes and then my wife would go on Pinterest and we bought her first home and she'd say, can you build this? And what started out as planter boxes turned into a rocking horse for my first child. And now into, you know, I got a small wood, wood shop and, and I met Mike along the way and Mike was kind enough to, you know, give me some some guidance on some things that I found interest in. And, um, I just, I just finished my first woodworking bench, uh, a traditional woodworking bench. Um, part of what I, Oh, go ahead, Mike. No, it's, it's an, it's an amazing bench. But yeah. This is, uh, this is somebody who's organized and who is a good woodworker. You're looking thank at it right now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that, Mike. And, and so I'm, I'm definitely, um, I'm not, I have no formal training in woodworking. I just typically, like a, a lot of people in today's age, we watch videos and I'm one of those that I see something and I might break it the first few times I'm trying to build it, but then eventually I'll get it right. So um, that's kind of, uh, it's kind of turned into a, a little bit of a, um, I don't know. It's just a fun hobby for me. I, I have, I'm a full-time dad, full-time, I have a full-time job, but, I somehow squeeze this in to, uh, it's kind of like therapy, if you will. So that's great. And how about that uh, little program you did where you, we had an auction for, uh, Oh the, yeah. So what, uh, yeah. 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 So every year for the past five years now, our department, um, has had this thing called, uh, it's a Movember event and they do it to raise money and basically a bunch of firefighters grow mustaches. And ends up being this fun event where they have a mustache, mustache contest. And the department um, is, you know, firefighting is a paramilitaristic job. And 
Um, this last year, I was able to get our fire chief to loosen the grooming standards so that we could have some really crazy mustaches. And that was, that was really quite cool to see him and upper management step up because usually they're pretty wound tight on stuff like that. And uh, where Mike came in was I initially approached him and I said, we love cribbage. We, cribbage is like the game in the fire station here in San Diego. We, I grew up, ever since I've been in the fire service, it's, it was something we did and we played it every day at lunch and dinner. And um, so over the years, I actually started making cribbage boards myself some time ago. And then I saw Mike's boards and I was like, wow, these are, these are awesome. For all our older firefighters who can't see the pegs very well, it was nice to have the, the, the bigger boards with the bigger pegs. And I, I have to blame Jeff Brad for that, but go ahead. He, he, <laughs> he, there's a regional inventor of cribbage boards. But go ahead. So, so we, uh, I set out with Mike and I told him my idea and I said, I just, there's going to be an auction and I'd like to, you know, work with you on making four of these boards. And so Mike came. And now if I, I remember, my memory serves me right, Mike, we had two boards made of olive wood with like a uh, live edge. And then two boards were the Purple Heart. And the Purple Heart came from the ship, right? I think so, it did, came, yeah, San Salvador, sure. It did, yeah. So, so uh, those items ended up, I, I was there um, at the auction and man, they were a hit. They ever, they, the people that got them, I was getting messaged later on, like, dude, where did you make these boards? They're incredible. Um, they're in fire stations now. Like, guys basically donate them to their crew if they want them at the auction. And, um, they were, they were, they were a prized piece to be won at that at that auction. So, and then the event raised fifteen thousand dollars. So it was, it wasn't just you know, and it was probably a hundred or so people there. It did really well, and it was definitely. Um, uh, very, you know, I was very grateful to be able to provide that um, to the group. So, All right. well, that's great. That's absolutely terrific. Thank you. Yep. There's another person that might be interesting as a fireman. I don't know if he's still there. Um, Steve, maybe if had to go. Yeah, I don't see him on the list. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, Steve, Steve Asaro uh, had some pictures, but I think he had to go back to work. He's on duty today. That's Mike, what happens with these firemen. <laughs> Mike, before you um, wind it down, could I ask a question? Sure. Okay. I wanted to ask it particularly of Ed and Bob, if they're still there, because oh, they, yeah. they were longtime presidents of the association, and they also both have run the design in wood for many years. And they might know the answer. Have, you, have we had success in the past with maybe going to corporate sponsors for these kinds of programs? In the case of what you did at Pendleton, you had a corporate sponsor, which made it really easy. And then by contrast, we have Mike McElney, who's sitting there funding these things out of his own pocket, which we've got to change. But I was wondering if there had been ever a time that we did have corporations stepping forward, wanting to fund these things for the benefit of their brand, their marketing, or whatever. Has there been a time like that? Uh, I can probably answer some of that. Um, the, uh, I've, over the years, I had uh, corporate people come in and, and sponsor things for the design and wood shows specifically. Yeah. Uh, for example, I had um, a flooring company uh, provided all the uh, flooring for the platforms in the show. And uh, it was a scratch my back type of thing where uh, we give them tickets and, and put their name on whatever they donated for one year for one show. And uh, it turned out pretty well uh, doing that with the Dine and Wood Show. We used a lot of different sponsors for that, the magazines. That's how I get the magazines involved um, with the awards. So, Bob, did you go to them with the, the need or the requirement? You already know you needed flooring. Therefore, you went to a corporation that does the flooring and gave them the right. opportunity? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And, and the same thing for the wood for the uh, children's chair project. Um, <clears throat> that that's, goes way back because um, we did that. Initially, we were doing it with Frost 
and then we moved over to Strata, um, and he's been doing it, I don't know, for, forever. But the, all that wood is donated for that children's Bob children's Evans children. and Jack Greedy. Sorry, Bob. Bob Evans and Jack Greedy with moved from uh, their previous company to Strata. Oh, okay. And they've yeah, been they've been donating that wood forever. Speaking uh, of uh, speaking of those chairs, I can't tell you how proud I was. I was in a children's hospital the other day in Tijuana, and I was getting a tour of the facility. And on one floor, I found four chairs made by the association, made in a particular year quite a long time ago. And then on another floor in a different room, I found eight chairs made by the association for the hospital. And it was just fantastic that we had had an impact even on the other side of the border. That was really cool. That's, that's kind of rare because uh, of uh, Betty Jones. Yes, exactly. Right. I know, I know her personally. Uh, our daughters used to uh, hang together, still do, in fact. <laughs> That and, explains uh, it. <laughs> and and uh, she talked me into uh, doing that. Uh, it was my policy when I was running the show that we kept all that stuff on this side of the border in within San Diego County. And then you uh, broke the rule. And, I, and I, don't yeah, I got I got talked into it. <laughs> I don't think we can control, control that, but you know, we we've got one more person to hear from here too. It's Sally Alt. Uh, from the San Diego Wood Turners, and she knows a lot about the uh, Turnaround for Vets program. I'd like to hear from her if we could. Cool. Uh, yes, hi. Um, our program has been going on for maybe 10 or 12 years, and uh, we now have uh, uh, locations at Camp Pendleton, at uh, Balboa, uh, Naval Medical Center Balboa, and at the VA's. Aspire, which is a, a residential recovery center down on San Diego Avenue in that old um, Western Law School building. And we started doing it with for um, recovery and, and part of the therapy for really badly injured guys coming back from when the war was going full speed. And we learned many ways of doing adaptive turning and, and uh, helping them get uh, a confidence. And turns out the focus uh, that you have to have when you're making a little pen is pain killing. And that was a, an eye opener for us. So that's been going well. And now we're getting very few physically injured, but quite a few with PTSD, traumatic brain injury. And they're just as damaged. They just, it just doesn't show. And it turns out that it's really effective for that. Um, uh -huh. I think your association has been very helpful. I, as far as I, I'm not the top dog here. I just am very active in it. But I think you've provided us with a lot of the pen kits through Rockler that you've donated money to Rockler and they've given us the, the pen kits because we go through maybe 500 pen kits a month. Wow. Um, Dude, can, I, and, can I butt in here? Yeah, Ed. Was, uh, the money that we, we would uh, have an auction <clears throat> at the seminar every year and the money that we raised there uh, went to your association for, for buying those pen kits for the turnaround yeah. for vets. Yeah, and we and very much- That's where that came from very much appreciated that we're continually fundraising at every moment we can um we've had a small a change of leadership recently tom leitner has backed off and he is sort of our our chairman emeritus and paul simpson has become the leader and he's doing a great job total different man style he's not the general he's he's a I don't remember what his rank is, but he's he's a high-ranking military. But uh, so it's continuing to to grow. We, of course, at the moment are completely dark. We can't can't work, but we, I know we'll be back up to full speed. Most of our fundraising is either Tom going, and sometimes he takes. Um, if you know Ernesto Aquino, he's one of our first 
real successes and he goes and they can pull tears out of a granite sculpture and checkbooks so they go to uh, churches and other groups and talk about the program and how it has affected the people who have taken it uh, we often help one of the, if if the our guys at Balboa tend to be a transient population because they're sent back when they're better they go back to their home base or they're medically discharged uh, but some of them stay around and some of them go back to a house where they have room and we help them get a lathe or and some tools to get started so they can continue and um, and try to hook them up with clubs in their their new geographic area which has been very positive too um, some of the the locals are 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 helping now they've gone through the program and now they come when they can even though they're working they come on Wednesdays and help so it's been successful we appreciate your help we recently have gotten some amazing wood if you've all know about cook woods up in uh, Washington I think it's Washington might be at Oregon every once in a while they send us a box big box of, of wood that's all cut down they're not cut into pen blanks but they're cut small enough so we can use them spectacular wood we have to go through and take some of it out because at the base we can't use uh, sensitizers so none of the rosewoods those all get pulled and then we make them those of us who are not sensitive to those make things out of that wood and and use those for our gift shop things that we that's another one of our fundraisers yeah. uh, so we also yeah I can ask you a quick question on that yeah I talked to Tom about that and he said that he would like to have some furniture um, that, that out of the Tory Pine. Um, oh, small stuff, yeah. Small furniture, and that's something yeah. the, uh, oh, sure. that, that our group could, could oh, support yeah. you. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. One, one of our real good connections is with the Tory Pines Park, and um, we sell anything we can get to them at their little there's a gift shop at their docent center, their information center. They give us wood. Anytime a tree is pruned or comes down, they give it to us because you know you can't really cut it unless it's on your own property. We have gotten it some other places because I live in Point Loma and we've had two or three big trees go down or have to be removed because they were becoming dangerous. And we, we go get that wood too. But they don't have a lot of room there, but some small pieces of furniture would probably be fabulous. I can see like footstools or kids' chairs. I think that would be phenomenal. They love anything. And it's we we pretty much do all Tory Pine there. We also have gift shops at the Valboa Hospital, and they buy a lot of pens and some small bowls and things there. And um, we're always looking for ways to fundraise because we do go through a lot of money and we have let's see 16 now we have 24 lathes so they take maintenance and we have tools at every location and we have uh, drill presses at um, Balboa and a bandsaw a good bandsaw now so we have we have equ equipment expenses as well and then some of our guys who can't come really often do stuff on the back. Uh, Doug Parker has been our fabulous. He makes lots and lots of pen blanks. He cuts them, drills them, glues them, mills them, and his, his are always perfect and brings in whole box loads of them. So um, a lot of, and then members who can't come and work will make things to, for, our, for our fundraising, for the gift shop. So at every meeting, we Tom comes in with a trunk load full of Tory pine, and people go get it and make things from it. So anything you all want to make out of Tory pine and let us put in the gift shop would be more than welcome. All right, Sally. Quick question for you because it is kind of impressive that you guys in San Diego County are in three locations, 
it obviously didn't start out with that big of a footprint, but okay. from when it was started through to the present, how did you guys progress to having actually three locations where this takes place? What was the uh, outreach effort like to make that happen? Well, it was actually quite a fight. Um, it was our first place was at Balboa. Well, we tried Pendleton first and we did a little demo up there and they all thought, oh, this is cool, but then we could never get it, any traction with the, the management. So our, our founders were Nan Bushley and Ken Roth, who were both military doctors and nurses at one point. So they under the ones that understood that this could happen. I mean, most people would not think you could take somebody who'd been blown up in the war and teach them how to use a lathe, but they thought it would work. And so we got started at Balboa. We had four lathes, we pa parked them in the hallway at the YMCA, the Armed Services YMCA is our sponsor on base at Balboa. And we had to haul them down three halls, up an elevator, across a courtyard, through another building, into another courtyard, where we had to put tarps on the entire courtyard and run electrical. And then we'd work for a few hours and then we had to undo the whole thing and put it all back. So when Tom Leitner got involved with the program, he was not the, the head of it at that point. Uh, Ken still was, because Ken was still okay. And um, one day we, we just got sort of frustrated. So we sent our general to see their admiral and pretty <laughs> soon we had a building. <laughs> so they found us this building it's a storage building and they split it in half with a chain link fence that we tarped. So our neighbor on the other side of the fence are carpet tiles and they're very quiet. They're nice neighbors. So we, and they were so, um, once we got the buy-in for this, they were amazing. We, we were running electrical wires and trying to tape them down and the facilities guy came by one day and saw what we were doing. He goes, stop everything. And, in two weeks, we had power everywhere we needed it, drop down, and they've been great. Nice. So, you know, and then, then <laughs> there's always glitches. Uh, some new person will come on base, you know, they change, they move them around all the time. And one of them decided that we were too close to the fire stairs. Mm -hmm. So for probably a year and a half they kept talking about it, moving us to this other building well of course then the guy got transferred so now there's no talk of that anymore problem solved <laughs> yes so ernesto or actually it was probably jesse james who was one of our early he was a he was a one of our ptsd real seriously injured ptsd guys he was he was transferred up to the there's a um, wounded warrior battalion at Camp Pendleton and he was transferred up there and he really wanted to keep turning so he started in on working on them and then Ernesto Aquino got sent up there and so th between the two of them they got the attention of the powers that be now Pendleton has been an on and off problem again depends on who's in charge but um, we have to move all the equipment there every time. So all of our lathes have had the bases uh, reinforced and big wheels put on them that are locking. And they have to push them into a room and then they have to pull them out. And we have a big, huge tool chest on wheels that um, comes out every time. And so that's still working well. Um, and then that the Aspire Center, I don't know how they found us or whether we found them it's a lockdown it's it's a very different population at balboa we have a lot of the a lot of those that's a, a c5 trauma center so if somebody's injured on duty they come there to get fixed and we have them there through all their surgeries through their rehab prosthesis if they need them and whatever yeah. and then they are sent back where they go Balboa, I mean, uh, Aspire is, we have some that have been on the street for 
a while. We have some that are there um, getting off drugs, getting off alcohol. And so we have been made part of their um, curriculum. And at first they were forced to come. They had to come, they had to spend an hour. And now you can't get rid of them because when we get there, they have already moved all the stuff. We're, we work on a balcony that, you know, so that all the dust goes down in the street um, and everything has to be moved in and out. They make lunch because they have a catering or a, not a catering, but they, they're taught how to do um, food service. So they make lunch for us. And now they're all into casting pen blanks. They have, they are into the acrylics. They love the acrylics. They make all these wild colors. So that's basically, and that's where we are with three spots. I don't, we had an admiral who was retired, who's really involved with Veterans Village. He wanted us to come there, but that never worked out. And that's a whole nother population again. Great talk story. Thank you very much. It's, it's been awesome. Yeah, too bad Tom didn't show up. He's, I, I remember Tom that he doesn't need a microphone. He does not need a microphone. <laughs> Even probably, he, we'd hear him all in our own homes. Um, <laughs> he's not, he's, he's, he's basically backed off. Paul is the one, and I did send him the thing, right. uh, your, the link, but it was just yesterday, so I don't know whether he could have or not, but he'd tell you the same thing. Sally? Um, can I ask a question? This is a glad sure. How many members do you have now? In the club or the club. at TAV? In the club, close to 230. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we're very happy. We're just about to do a Zoom thing like this. We just had a board meeting by Zoom, and we're going to do uh, – Joe Fleming is going to do our first one. We're going to have our meetings remotely with demos because we have at least 12 or 13 named demonstrators throughout the country who have already been doing these. Yeah. And mostly people would all sit in the meeting room and watch on the big TVs. But now there's no reason why they can't watch from their own house. Right. So we're about to launch that. Our next meeting will be a remote. Wow. That's great. No, the is it something which uh, you would invite a larger audience, say the fine woodworkers to participate in as well? Well, we might. Um, that's still, the one problem is that um, this Zoom has be, had some issues with um, bombing, Zoom bombing and putting porno up. If you've read about that, uh, somebody can hack in and all of a sudden you're seeing things that you didn't really plan to see <laughs> so it the the invitation has to be really controlled and we're we're going to put it out through our email blast and on our members only site so i will ask brian if there's some way that we could allow your guys because why not i mean we're going to buy the pro version which is or the business version which is 500 participants and yeah. then on that one you have the meeting person, the host, not the person who's doing the demo, but the host is, is controlling. And there's some way that we haven't figured out yet. You can raise your hand digitally and say that you have a question. Yeah, you may be curious to know that the person who's our host, the producer of these events, is also the person who does our mailings to our audience. So we do have that that uh, extra cost version of Zoom. Mike, uh -huh. who is on this call, he might yeah. be a good person to be put in contact with the person who's going to run yours. Okay. Also, we yeah. can give you an assurance that when we send out, if you give us the opportunity to send out an invitation, that Mike will just be sending it out to members. Okay. So well, I'll Mike run it by our, our board because they're very. that's a big concern of ours. Um, we don't want that happening. Yeah. So um, this next demo is our member, Joe Fleming, who is going to talk about uh, airbrush. And I think your guys would probably be interested in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's good at that. He's very good at that. And um, he did a class at his house just before this all happened. When So we actually were there. And there were five of us, I think, because I didn't have a clue about airbrush. And, of course, I had left with one because he does sell them. 
And um, so he's got everything set up there. He's got three cameras and he's got the mic and he did a little test one for us the other day. And it should work well. We're gonna do a test meeting before the meeting to make sure everything goes well. So that's gonna be on the 18th. So Mike, if you send me a link to whoever you want me to connect with, with yeah. them. Oh, okay. for sure. Uh, we haven't heard from Jeff Bratt yet, who has done so incredibly much for, for everything. And he worked on the table uh, for 27. Um, you might have something to say. I see his mic is off, but uh, his camera's on. So Jeff, are you there? Um, I'm here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I just saw, um, I designed the cribbage boards that you've, I don't know, you've made 20 or 30 or 40 of them now. <laughs> yeah, from that design file. yeah, yeah. I need to get them all done with CNC. So that's our next, our next, uh, rather than doing my, my, my six by six laser is, is not up to it. I don't think. Yeah. yeah, you make big boards. <laughs> like said. Yeah, so I you you ran with it. I kind of started the project and you know showed you where to buy the pegs and all that sort of stuff. And you've been yeah. uh, distributing them all over San Diego County, as far as I know. That's it. It's the same design, and the same design will work for laser or CNC. It's not a yeah. Design file is the same. All right. Anyhow, you uh, you worked on the table, and, and uh, you should get. Uh, uh, a, a lot of credit for your participation there, and, and bringing in the chairs was like, oh, that, that was great because we, we didn't know how we were going to sit that many people down. <laughs> so, anyhow, it was a good thing. I, I, thank you from uh, thank thank you from back then. All right, you're welcome. All right. Uh, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're just about. Um, wrapped up here unless anybody else has something to say um is this gonna more or less end it he said hopefully this was great thank you thank <laughs> you very much mike i appreciate it all right thanks mike i appreciate your help oh, Hi, everybody. not a problem and another couple of years and i'll probably know what to do <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mike. Bye, Mike. All right. Love learning it. Thanks, Mike. We'll talk to you later. All right. All right. That's it.